Following on in our war series, we're moving forward to look at the Cold War period from the late 1940s through to the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. For this list, we're looking at films revolving around espionage, the space race and other themes during the geopolitical tensions between the Eastern and Western blocs after World War II. Also, whilst the Vietnam War was technically part of the Cold War period, we won't be looking at Vietnam War films as we're going to focus on those in a separate list. Number 10, The Hunt for Red October. What gives you the right to fire on my ship? Your signal said nothing of a torpedo. Ryan, it was necessary to maintain the illusion for your crew. By far the best adaptation of Tom Clancy's best-selling techno-thriller novels of the 1980s and 1990s, The Hunt for Red October exemplifies Hollywood movie making at its best, full of heavy duty dialogue and slow burn suspense. The story follows a Soviet submarine commander played by Sean Connery who puts the CIA and the Soviet government into crisis mode by heading directly towards the United States. One of the final films made during the actual Cold War, The Hunt for Red October in retrospect feels like a farewell to an era. How close is that Alpha, Jonesy? Thousand yards, dead astern, going to port. Reverse your turn. Aye, sir. Number nine, the right stuff. Not the most obvious Cold War movie, but this account of the early years of the space race provides one of the best explanations of how people fought during those times. A study of the Americans and Soviets racing to be the first to put a man in space, to be the first to have a man to orbit the world for a day. All that money, all that energy and inspiration, all of it was expended in a gigantic game of one-upmanship, told fantastically in this incredible historical drama. Number eight, failsafe. Set the failsafe box. Open our operational orders. Failsafe tells the tale of American Air Force bombers who were scrambled in response to a detected intrusion in US airspace and left to await further orders. The alert turns out to be a false alarm, but a technical malfunction ends up sending American planes to Moscow to deliver a nuclear attack, leaving both the Americans and Russians working together to prevent the accidental attack. Failsafe premiered two years after the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it played on America's very real fear of nuclear war. Jack, it's Helen! Do you recognize my voice? Jack! Number seven, the spy who came in from the cold. Discus throwers. I can't go home. Don't you mind giving up your country? What the hell's my country done for me? I worked for the service for 18 years and they kicked me out as if it'd been 18 minutes. Why did you work for them? Well, the money. Only money. This film adaptation of John le Carre's breakthrough novel is an outstanding tale of compromise and disillusion. Apparently le Carre was unhappy that Richard Burton was cast in the lead as he initially wanted Trevor Howard as the titular spy. But to more objective viewers, Burton is outstanding as the beaten and broken man who has done too many questionable things. The moral ambiguities of the hidden war were never laid so bare than in this incredibly British Cold War thriller. Look, your job and mine permit us to take human life. If I want to kill you, and I can only do it by putting a bomb in a restaurant, and that's the way I'll kill you. That's what I'll do. Number six, the Manchurian candidate. Shoot Bobby Red through the forest. Yes, ma'am. The Manchurian Candidate took a far-fetched premise and made it believable. The story begins in Korea when a captured platoon of American soldiers is subjected to brainwashing by the Chinese captors. Shocking twists and turns intensify as the film morphs into an almost psychological horror. Frankenheimer used wide lens shots to powerful effects, creating an intimate, claustrophobic relationship between the characters. A musty classic has been imitated many times since. Defending America even if it means his own death rallying a nation of television viewers into hysteria to sweep us up into the White House with powers that will make martial law seem like anarchy. Number five, The Iron Giant. You scare me, Mansley. You want us to bomb ourselves in order to kill it? General, the giant seems to follow whatever attacks it. We can lure it away from the town, then destroy it. 
When a mysterious extraterrestrial android crashes on Earth, government agent Kent Mansley is out in force. Whilst director Brad Bird makes much of the agent's comic pomposity during the first act, things go from bad to worse during his pursuit of our peaceful protagonist, with his paranoia culminating in an impulsive nuclear button pushing. This small animated masterpiece is a compelling story of friendship and acceptance in which each dramatic beat is another step in the Cold War destruction manual. It's okay, it's okay. We gotta show them you're good. <sighs> Number 4 The Lives of Others. Wenn Sie uns den Namen des Fluchthelfers nicht nennen, muss ich noch heute Nacht Ihre Frau verhaften lassen. Jan und Nadja kommen in eine staatliche Erziehungsanstalt. Wollen Sie das? A perfect companion piece to Coppola's The Conversation, this Oscar winning German film is just as quietly explosive. Ulrich Muhud stars as the Stasi officer listening in on a Berlin playwright's apartment. Slowly but surely, the government and its officials make a series of ethical missteps which result in characters turning rogue. These in turn worsen the political situation, leading to a behind closed doors game of cat and mouse. As with the best Cold War movies, the stakes here are sky high, making a compelling chase thriller, but all the work comes from below the surface where the cogs never cease to turn. Bei Verhören arbeiten Sie mit Feinden des Sozialismus. Vergessen Sie das nie. Number 3 North by Northwest. This spy thriller film directed by Alfred Hitchcock is a tale of mistaken identity, with an innocent man pursued across the United States by agents of a mysterious organisation trying to prevent him from blocking their plan to smuggle out microfilm that contains government secrets. This film is, with good reason, considered one of the classics of spy movies. In part this is because it was directed by Alfred Hitchcock, but it's also because it features a truly tremendous performance by Cary Grant, who manages to be his usual charming and amusing self. A mark of the film's influence is the frequency with which it has been spoofed, and the iconic image of Cary Grant running away from a hovering plane has gone down as an iconic moment in cinema. So you became a Girl Scout? Maybe it was the first time anyone ever asked me to do anything worthwhile. Has life been like that? Mm -hmm. Number 2 The Third Man. <laughs> This 1949 British film directed by Carol Reed is considered one of the greatest films of all time. Graham Greene's morose tale of intrigue in post-war Vienna, The Third Man interrogates the morality of Europe after the war, a theme emphasised by the crooked cinematography and striking score. With the city divided into four zones, American pulp writer Holly Martins arrives to look up his old friend Harry Lyme. After Martins learns Lyme is supposedly deceased, he investigates the fate of his friend and gets him way out of his depth barely able to understand the world he has just entered. Harry! Before we reveal our number one film, here are some honourable mentions that just missed the list. Threads. Cold War. From Russia with Love. The Ypcris file. Lose that door, will you? Tinker Taylor sold a spy. Where did it come from? What's the access? A new secret source of mine. Number one, Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room. What is going on here? I demand an explanation. The importance of Stanley Kubrick's Doctor Strangelove cannot be overstated. The film changed the way people saw the world. Other films might hit you over the head with Cold War horror, but Doctor Strangelove actually empowered its audience, not by preaching, but instead using ironic humour. Doctor Strangelove made a mockery of the system, proving satire can be the sharpest weapon. Kubrick initially set out to make a serious Cold War thriller. However, after reading dozens of books on nuclear war strategy, he found the subject matter so bleak to the point where it began to sound funny. One of the most relentless comedies ever made, Doctor Strangelove remains essential viewing. Hey, what about Major Kong? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have your own opinions? Leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for new content every week.